Hi, my name is Adam Hood. I'm with the Firebase Movement. What? Praise the Lord. Thank God. And we are here to talk about building the citywide altar. And I want to even <sighs> call it the nationwide altar. Wow. I feel like we're called to model something for the church and our nation in this hour. Wow. That God is calling us to That's stand serious. up, to be men of God, and to lead as he gives us the unction. Yeah. And this is something that God's Sounds laid biblical. on our heart in this hour. There's been an attack on masculinity. There's been an attack on prayer. Oh, my goodness. The Can church do- has been so prayerless for so long. Can we talk about biblical masculinity sometime? Yeah, let's do a whole episode on that. Oh, my goodness. Let's do like 10. But we're trying to Sorry. model We're trying to model that today. And I just want to introduce my good friend here, Stephen Nugan. Hey, everybody. Of the Firebase Movement. Yes. Bling. And we want to talk about why it's on the heart of God. What is the priority for this hour? Why the altar of God? Why night and day prayer? Wow. Are you throwing that to me? I'm throwing that to you right now. Why night and day prayer? Well, let me tell you what. I first saw the fruit of night and day prayer. I actually visited the house of prayer in 2005. And I walked in, and the presence of God was so thick and tangible in the place. The spirit of wisdom and revelation was resting on the room. I saw 18 to 22-year-olds pacing up and down, like uh, getting up and praying with such authority, reading the scriptures. I was thinking to myself, man, when I was 18 to 22, I was not in a prayer room. Mm-hmm. I was in the bars. I was in the clubs. Mm-hmm. I was doing stuff that was not helpful for my life. Yeah. So I was like... What species of Christian is this? Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't see this in the ch- local church, really. You know what I mean? This type of deep devotion and 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 a throne room authority and intercession mm-hmm. and worship that just shifts the atmosphere so powerfully. And so I came home from that encounter. Mm-hmm. God began to take me into the scriptures, and I began to read about uh, King David you know, establishing day and night worship and prayer at the center of life and faith in Amen. in early Israel. And I was like, this is incredible. They had singers and musicians yeah. literally going 24 hours a day, seven days a week for decades under David's yeah. leadership. And when that happened, Israel had victory on every side. They I certainly mean, did. It was the most powerful nation in the world mm-hmm. at that time. And then he handed that legacy off to his son Solomon. I don't know how well Solomon stewarded it, um, but David, you know, but he built the temple and then it was moved from the tabernacle into the temple. And I read about that. And then you read through Israel's history, the kings of Israel, and you see how um, they would fall away from that day and night worship and prayer and fall into idolatry and fall into uh, occult practices and turn away from the Lord. Yeah, And then when there were times of revival, you saw restoration of this Davidic order of worship. No and I started to connect the dots. I'm like, this is incredible. Like, this mm-hmm. is literally a blueprint for awakening and revival and harvest. And so I I saw this. Uh, I'm going to read this out of Amos chapter 9, uh, 9-11. It says, and so uh, obviously Israel... Uh, comes under judgment because she eventually falls into idolatry. First yeah. Israel in the north, and then Judah in the south. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but then there's this this prophecy of hope. Yeah. In Amos chapter nine, and this is what it says, bro. He's talking about something happening in the future. I believe it's in the last days. Um, it says, "In that day, this is through the prophet Amos, Amos nine eleven. In that day, I'll restore the fallen tabernacle of David. In other words, this Davidic." order of worship that Israel has fallen away from, God is saying, I'm going to restore it. Yeah, I'm going to restore it. From the ruins, I'll rebuild it and restore its former glory. And then he goes on and talks about a lot of other incredible promises. But so I I read that passage in uh, Amos chapter 9, and then I read this in Acts Acts chapter 15, which is just incredible. Of course, this is when the apostle Paul And Barnabas go to Jerusalem because there's a bunch of Judaizers that are trying to get people circumcised, that are trying to say, hey, it's Jesus plus this, Jesus plus circumcision. Mm -hmm. So he goes to Jerusalem to have the matter settled. And what's interesting is after James, the brother of the Lord, hears him, he ends up quoting this passage in Amos chapter 9. He says this, and I love the way he says it because it adds, I believe, a little bit of depth to it and talks about the connection between 
day and night worship and prayer and the harvest. Yeah. Day and night worship and prayer and what we believe is the harvest that's going to happen before the Lord returns. No doubt. A massive harvest yeah. because of a massive worship and prayer movement that's not just in one location, mm-hmm. but it's all over the earth. Yeah. It's all over the earth. So listen to what he says in Acts chapter 15, verse 16. Afterward, I will return and restore the fallen tabernacle of David. I'll rebuild its ruins and restore it. Listen to this, verse 17. So that the rest of humanity might seek the Lord, including the Gentiles. Yeah. All those I've called to be mine. The Lord has spoken. He who made these things known so long ago. And of course, he's quoting the, the prophet Amos. Yeah. And what's so powerful about that is it confirms something Jesus said about himself. He said, if I'm lifted up, now obviously in the original context, he's talking about the cross, Yeah. right? And mm-hmm. I believe the worship movement is elevating the cross. It is. The worship movement is elevating the cross at a global yeah. scale. What was done on that cross for us, what Jesus came and, and took back for us, it's all about that. And he's saying, I, I believe he's also saying, in this end time worship movement, when I'm lifted up, in the nations, I'm going to pour out my spirit and draw all flesh to myself. Amen. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's Have right. Have you heard of that yes. prophecy before? Oh, yeah. And I believe it's going to happen, but it's deeply rooted in this day and night worship movement. It really so is. So we are not going to see the fulfillment of prophecy until we lay hold of Amen. this day and night worship and prayer mandate that I believe is on the church of the, and, and I call it the church of the book of Revelation. Yeah. We have a lot of people, a lot of revivalists saying, let's go back to the book of Acts. And I love the book of Acts. Yeah. I think there's so much we can glean from the church fathers and what the Holy Spirit was doing at the birth of the church. But I think there's a whole nother species mm-hmm. that's being raised up. And the scriptures say the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. I believe the that's church right. of the book of Revelation mm-hmm. will be walking in such a profound revelation of day and night worship and prayer and how that's mm-hmm. a key to, to the kingdom of God being unleashed on the earth and ultimately ushering in the kingdom of God. That's right. The kingdom of God. That's yeah. literally what the Holy Spirit's inviting the church into right now is partner with me Amen. to prepare the earth for my return. That's right. I will come by my presence first, and then I will come in body. That's right. You know what I mean? And, and, and establish my kingdom. come when Jerusalem becomes a praise in the earth. And he says, I set watchmen on my wall who will never hold their peace Come on. day or night until Jerusalem becomes a praise in the earth. Why? Because he inhabits praise. I and love it. Psalm 22, three, Psalm 22, three. Amen. And when yeah. the church is filled with the spirit and the presence of God, and there's sounds of rejoicing in the tents of the righteous, the, the tents of David, the tabernacle of David being raised up again, established in the earth, just like you read in Acts 15. Yeah. This is on the heart of God. There's grace for what's on God's heart. Totally. And he's not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, like the Bible says. He's long-suffering, not willing that any would perish, but that all would come into repentance in agreement with God. And he has a plan for this hour, and the plan is his church. Oh, bro. We can I talk about that for one sure. second? Like what you just said really like stirred my heart in this way because Jesus basically the he taught us to pray. He said, yeah. This is how you should pray. Let Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's right. Literally, the mandate on the church in terms of intercession. I mean, there's lots yeah, of things yeah, we yeah. can pray, but the central mandate on mm-hmm. the church is pray that the kingdom of that, that uh, it, the kingdom of God would come on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. What's happening in heaven? Yeah. That becomes a very important question for the church in this hour right now. That's right. And when you read, I mean, you can read a lot of different places. You can read in Ezekiel, you can read in Daniel, you can read in, uh, you can read in Isaiah 6, you can read in Revelation 4 and 5. Mm-hmm. Every time the veil between heaven and earth gets opened up because a prophet or an apostle is being taken into an encounter with the heart of God in the throne room. Yeah. We get to see what's happening in the throne room. Amen. What's happening in the throne room, Adam? 
right now, the 24 elders and the four living creatures never cease to praise him. And they praise him with a loud voice and smoke fills the whole room and they cast their crowns down before him forever and ever more. And it never ceases. They never stop worshiping. They never stop out of that worship, turning and declaring what God is speaking in intercession back to God or declaring it over the earth. It never stops. Day and night worship, day and night intercession never stops. In fact, Jesus is interceding continually for us. That's right. And he's saying, where are my prayer partners? Yeah. Where are my prayer partners on the earth? Yeah. He said we're the royal priesthood. And so when we're talking about the tabernacle Revelation of David, five. Yeah, so we're the tabernacle of, of David, but he says we're all now the kingdom of priests. David hired Levites. He hired priests who were sanctioned priests, and it was a, a special class of Israelites in that time. Now, through the new covenant, Say it, we are all that special class. We are all the royal priesthood of God. So this tabernacle of David mandate is on you. It's on Say it. you. Say it. It's on you. That, I don't know your gift mix, woo! but I know right to the camera. you are a royal priest in the kingdom of God. No doubt. And we know that because it says it in Revelation, Revelation 5. You remember when Jesus, the apostle John, is caught up in Revelation 5 in this encounter in the throne room, and he begins to weep because God's got a scroll in his hand and no one can open it. And he begins to mourn, and the angel next to him says, hey, don't worry, God's got a plan. And then suddenly uh, the lamb who is slain, Jesus is in the middle of the throne room, walks up, grabs the scroll, and worship erupts in yeah. heaven. A new song erupts, and this is what it says. It says, and they sang a new song with these words, you're worthy to take the scroll and break its seals and open it, for you were slaughtered and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Listen to this, verse 10. And you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God. Amen. So this is not now just Levites, and no. it's not now just an elite group within right. the Levites Come who on. are able to minister to God. Now, because of the blood of Jesus, every single person in the church that says they're following Jesus is a priest. That means your place is in the throne room. That's where you're called. You are called first to the throne room of God, and we believe that yeah. that reality here, we call it the altar of the Lord. Yes. We call it the house of prayer. Yes. You, can, you can call it, we call it the nuclear reactor core of the end times church. We, yeah. ca- you know, we need that reality in we the do. church. It needs to be our number one priority. No doubt. We're speaking identity over you today. You need to know who you are in Christ as a church. We wear the pants. We have the authority. The government is upon his shoulders. He's the head. We're the body. Guess what? We're in the shoulders too. So the government's on our shoulders with him. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places, and we have the privilege, and we have the high honor, and we also have the commissioning to legislate his kingdom come and his will be done as we trumpet the word of the Lord from the presence of the Spirit as we're praising him continually night and day. This is God's design. Yeah. He said, I totally. am building a house of prayer for all nations. It says in Isaiah 2 2, in the last days, I will exalt the mountain of the house of the Lord on the top of the mountains. And then it says, and then the nations will stream unto it. Well, Jesus said, my house is a house of prayer for all nations nations. So this calling is going out to every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every Bible-believing denomination. Yeah, this and call so, is for you. And so let, I, I want to get real specific. I, I'd like to call people to action, if yeah, that's yeah. okay with yeah, you. Yeah, please. Because I feel like if, if, if understanding what it means to be a priest and to minister to God in worship, and then to minister in intercession, to partner with Christ in intercession— hearing what God is saying and then praying it back to him or hearing what he's saying and declaring it over your family, declaring it over your city, declaring it over your nation, declaring it over the nations of the earth. If you haven't entered into that ministry, we want to challenge you biblically. This is where the entire church is being called right now. This is the priority in the heart of God. Everything else will flow out of this. This is a corporate manifestation of Matthew 6.33 that we would seek first the kingdom of God. 
And of course, there's here's here's what I love about Matthew six thirty three. Mm-hmm. It's you know we're seeking first the kingdom of God, but we don't often realize there's a king yeah. at the head of that kingdom. No doubt. And that king has a heart. Yeah. So what we're really saying is seek the heart of the king above all things. Definitely. I assure you, church, this is the burning center of God's heart because once He comes into the midst of His people, then people are going to know that God is real. No doubt. God will be known when we make him first mm. um, through day and night worship and prayer. The whole creation is groaning and yeah. travailing yeah. for the revealing of the mature sons and daughters of God. That's right. This is about Christ in us, the hope of glory being magnified as we wait on him, as we have intimacy with him in that place of night and day praise and prayer. And Jesus's prayer right before he went to the cross was, Father, may they be one as we are one. Then the world will know. He wants to be yeah. one in us. Yeah. Then the world will know the whole creation is groaning and travailing for this very thing. The prayer culture that God is after is one of intimacy with him. It's a yeah. heart connection that Steve was just talking about, this burning heart of love that God has. It's not a, an agenda-driven prayer culture. This is a person-driven, the person of God-driven prayer yeah. culture. He wants our hearts. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And let me tell you, the nations will come into that prayer. And loving him looks like something. Mm -hmm. Loving him looks like something. When you love someone, you want to spend time with them. Come on. Like I I have teenagers, (laughs) like when when they start to like have a little bit of, you know, romance with Mm. a, a young lady. They're literally thinking about it all the time. They're texting them all the time. They're FaceTiming them all the time. All they think about all day long is like, how do I spend more time with yeah. this other person? This is And God's trying to show us, this is what first love looks like. It is. That's the kind of passion he wants us to have, mm-hmm. to be with him. And the altar of the Lord, the house of prayer is just a corporate opportunity to do that together. No doubt. To love God together. Mm-hmm. And so I want to I wanna encourage you, Number one, get involved with the altar of the Lord. If your church is not doing anything, then be part of the citywide altar at the That's firebase. Right. Let's um, do it. 3029 4th Avenue South in Minneapolis, in the heart of the city. We believe God's called us to raise up an altar. And it's not our altar. It's his altar. That's right. And it's it's an altar for the entire church of the Twin Cities. So we're asking you, come and bring your offering to the altar of the Lord. Participate corporately and yeah. when we do, if we literally had an altar going 24-7 in our city, it would shift the atmosphere. And if the church was doing this together in yeah. unity, yes. I don't even... Th- there's that's no the way, other piece that's so important. The devil can't stop that church. He can't. So step into that. If you're a pastor and you're hearing that, reach out to us at the Firebase. All our contact info will be here. You can go to firebasemovement.com. Let's get connected. Let's get your offering to the altar of the Lord. That's right. Um, that's worship and prayer. That's also the opportunity to give yeah. and to sow financially into the house of the Lord. That's a whole other episode oh, that my we're going to unpack later. Yeah, that but, goes. Because that's very biblical. A lot there. It's very biblical yeah. and very rewarding to sow into the house yeah. of prayer. Or if you're an individual and you just want to grow in intercession, you want to, you're a worship leader and you want to bring your offering to the Lord. We want to talk with you. We want to talk to you. So go to firebasemovement.com, reach out to Adam. He's adam at firebasemovement.com. We'll drop his number and some of his uh, assistants that are helping him build the altar. We'll put their contact info, but we want to encourage you, like, get with what God is doing in this hour. And this, I, I want to say this one thing to the church, because I have many pastors who are good friends of mine, and I love them. I love the local church. Um, but uh, I believe that this day, when we have day and night worship and prayer, it will literally impact every ministry in our city. I, I don't believe that's an exaggeration. It's probably an understatement. It's going to mm-hmm. impact every other ministry in our city because we will corporately be able to experience more of the presence of God, more of the grace of God, more no of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And there's a promise in the Bible. It says in Haggai, when we build a house that pleases God, which we know is a house of prayer, and specifically in that book, he was talking about the altar of the Lord. Come and on. they were restoring the altar worship to God. They were Come restoring on. that Davidic tabernacle of David worship. 
He said, if you do this, I will shake everything which can be shaken. That includes all the powers and principalities, all the manifestations of wickedness in this generation, and he will reveal his kingdom, which cannot be shaken. So let's get the kingdom. Let's get the kingdom here, church. Aren't we tired of like swinging at the fences without God? Don't we just need God to come and deal with the enemy? That's what I'm going no for. Doubt. I just want to create a resting place for That's God it. and then let the principalities and powers scatter. We don't even have when to the focus king, on them, right? When the king of glory comes, <laughs> we don't need to focus on the principalities no. and powers or the political parties. We need to focus on the king we, of kings, yes. the king of glory. And if we will set our eyes on him and not get distracted by the other 3,000 channels that are trying to tell us, look over here, we win, church. We, we win. win. We win. He fixes our politics. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. (laughs) He is the Savior, and he's good at saving the day. Wow. And when we unite the promises in that place, I command the blessing, even salvation. Even salvation. There is a special promise that's just in unity. Biblical unity has a very special biblical promise attached to it. Okay. So now you brought up unity. I want to say one more thing about that. Is that okay? Sure, yeah. Because... In order to get unity, because I've been through, I've been a part of a lot of unity meetings and, you know, where everybody sits in a room and we wait for unity to happen. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I want to talk about this for a minute because true unity is only going to happen with humility mm-hmm. because the thing that divides us is pride. Right. You know, whether it's a, a pet doctrine or, you know what I mean? I mean, there's mm-hmm. that's why there's 150,000 different expressions of the church. Because everybody thinks they got to plan a new church when they don't agree on 100% of stuff doctrinally, mm, right? Yeah. And so I really have sensed that the Holy Spirit saying, hey, without humility, there will be no unity. And the, and the thing that produces humility is spending time in the presence of God. That's right. The altar is the answer the for unity. The is altar the, is the antidote for pride. Because when you're in it the is. presence of God, no one's looking to the left and right trying to check other people's doctrine. You're on your face with snot coming down. You know snot makes it really real, right? <laughs> the snot's coming down, and you're weeping and repenting and just trying to be right with God because His glory is there, and you're not arguing over secondary and tertiary issues. And so, or you're dancing and rejoicing. Come on. And you're with so banners? filled with, with banners if you need them, if you have them. We <laughs> don't it. refuse them. We, we love all of the variety and the different styles of worship. We wanted this to be a house of prayer for all nations because God wants it to be a house of prayer for all Amen. nations. Amen. And so we're going to have African worship. We're going to have Asian style of worship. We're going to have Latino worship. We're going to have American. all the different styles of worship, the high reggae. praises. I'm going to do a reggae the, set. Yeah, let's Maybe. do it. Why not? I mean, I we need that cool. Calypso Island as long Reggae as it's holy. Worship. Yeah. As long as it's holy, as long as it's praising God, as long as it's biblical, there's freedom in the house of God, but there's also order. And something that's unique about our house of prayer, which I really love, is we we really revere the word of God. Yeah. We really revere. We don't forbid prophecy. We don't forbid the spirit moving in any way, but it needs to line up with scripture. We want to test it. We're going to test We're it. Gonna test it. We're going to test it. We're going to keep it biblical. It. We're going to line it up with the Bible because we we don't need the spirit of weird. We don't in the need church. it. We don't have to hype it up. Yeah, we need we the need word. We need to not hype it up. We need the word and the spirit without the spirit of weird, and that's awesome. But as we really praise him, as we really recognize how beautiful he is, it's super easy to praise him with high praises. It's really easy to rejoice in his presence. He's really that good, and he's really that worthy, church. Amen. Love you guys. Love you. See you at the altar. <laughs>